So now some examples of the MVT being used. So one is we're just flat out asked to work with the MVT. So I have the function x squared on an interval 0 to 3. If possible, find the value guaranteed by the MVT. So first thing I have to do is I have to make sure I'm allowed to use the MVT. Well, x squared is most definitely continuous on 0 to 3. So f of x is continuous on the closed interval 0 to 3. And the derivative of f of x f, or is 2x, which is so does exist over that. So f of x is also differentiable on the open interval 0 to 3. I do need to state this because otherwise I'm not allowed to use the MVT. So the MVT applies. I can now go to the MVT. I tend to write the MVT out. So my derivative slope of the tangent should equal the slope of the secant. And the fact I put an x instead of a c is OK. Um, in terms of solving the problem, technically it should be a c, but um, we'll just go with I'm misspelling the letter c. Oops, sorry about that. So I know that the derivative of f is 2x. f of b is whatever f of 3 is minus f of 0 over 3 minus 0. So 2x, f of 3 is going to be 9, f of 0 is 0, over 3 minus 0. So I have 2x is equal to 3. So x is equal to 3 halves. And just a quick check, 3 halves is in my interval from 0 to 3. And so there's the value where x squared has the exact same slope as the at slope of the secant from 0 to 3 for that function. If I move on to a different one, MVT in real life. Um, so toll roads are an example where the MVT actually gets applied. So you get on a toll road, and two minutes later you exit the toll road after traveling two miles. Well, the speed limit on the toll road is 55 miles per hour, and we want to know, did the car break the speed limit at some point in the two-minute interval? This is actually a way that speeding tickets are calculated on toll roads in real life. This is also a way in which uh, if you go up further north along I-71 to around central Ohio, uh, the highway patrol sometimes uses airplanes to catch speeders. They're not using radar from an airplane or a laser. What they are using is they are timing how far you travel a certain distance. And they have a little chart that says if you travel this distance in this time, even though it's an average velocity, MVT is going to apply to the motion of the car. If the average velocity is above the speed limit, they know at some point in that interval you are breaking the speed limit. So the idea of this is, is the motion of a car is continuous and differentiable on a closed interval. So our interval is 0 to 2 minutes. Although, if I think of this in terms of hours, because this is in minutes, I know I'm going to want to be in hours. So this is 0 to 1 30th of an hour. I can say the motion is continuous on that interval of 0 to 1 30th and differentiable. On the open interval, 0 to 1 30th. That's because the continuity part is the position. I'm sorry, not position. It's the displacement. And the differentiability part would be the derivative of that, which is velocity. And we know those both have to exist. We can't have displacement or velocity suddenly jump around. It's they're both going, it's going to be both continuous and differentiable. So this means somewhere. The instantaneous velocity oops, must be equal to the average velocity at some point in that two minutes. So I find my average velocity, which we traveled two miles in one thirtieth of an hour which is 60 miles per hour. 
since 60 miles per hour is greater than 55 miles per hour, there was a moment in that two minutes where the car was speeding. So yes, the car did break the speed limit. And that would hold up in a court of law as well. So if I then move on to a third example, um, in a free response, the MVT typically gets asked uh, using a table, much like the IVT does. And so there's actually a lot of confusion over should I be using the IVT or the MVT when I'm presented a problem with a table because the questions look very, very similar. So here, I have a table for values of H. I am told it is continuous on the closed interval 0 to 20 and excuse me, differential on the open interval 0 to 20. First, I'm being asked to explain why there is a value B from somewhere between 0 and 20 such that H of B is 10. Because I have a table that's about H and I'm asked about a value of H. So in other words, what I am asked about is what is in the table. That is the IVT. So because these are the same, that's the IVT. So I first need to show I'm allowed to use the IVT. So we are told H of X is continuous on that closed interval 0 to 20. So the IVT applies. Well, somewhere from there, I just need to know that I need some endpoints here that were one's bigger than 10 and smaller than 10. Well, I can see that H of 5 is 6 and H of 10 is 16. And since the value that, that I'm being asked about is between 6 and 16, there is a B in that interval 0 to 20 such that H of B is equal to 10. And we've done this before back when we talked about the IVT. Remember we had to say I'm sure I have to show I'm allowed to use the IVT, find the function values at the endpoints, show that what I'm being asked about is between those values, and then state my conclusion. If I move to the second thing I'm asked here, I'm being asked with that same table of values, why is there a value C within that interval 0 to 20 such that H prime of C is equal to negative 1? Notice there, the only difference is in the first problem, I was asked about H of B, or about H, and in this problem, I'm asked about H prime. Since my table is about H, but this is H prime, this is an MVT question. So I need to show I'm allowed to use the MVT. So I am told that H is continuous on the closed interval, 0 to 20, and differentiable on the open interval, 0 to 20. I do need to say this, even though they told me that already, because I need to prove that I know that that's important for the MVT to apply. So now, I need to find my slopes. So if I find my slope between 20, 0 and 20, that's going to be negative 9 minus negative 1, which is negative 8 over 20. Well, that's not equal to negative 1. If I do uh, 5 to 15, so h of 15 minus h of 5 over 15 minus 5, well, h of 15 is negative 4, h of 5 is 6 over 15 minus 5. This gives me negative 10 over 10, which is negative 1. So my average rate of change was negative 1, and the MVT says that, well, that means there has to be some C so there is a C 
in 0 to 20, such that h prime of c is equal to negative 1. And I could even narrow this down even more and say, well, I actually even know it's between 5 and 15, which is a subset of 0 to 20. And that is the MVT.